welcome back to my channel, Reading Warrior. So t for today's video, I'm going to be reviewing all of the books that I read during the reading rush that ended about a week ago. But before I jump into that, I do want to talk to you guys about some upcoming plans because fall, there are a lot of different readathons going on and they're all, they all sound so much fun and like I would love to do them all. But I don't think I will be able to. I don't think I'll have the time because I am also going into my freshman year of college this fall. And so I really want to make sure that like I'm on top of my classes and I'm responsible with my time and things like that. So while I do hope to do some readathons, I'm not sure I can do all of them. And even if I do do a few of them, a couple of them, or however many, I don't know if I'll be able to do daily vlogs like I did for the reading rush. Even though that was like a day or two at a time. I might just do week-long vlogs or I I don't know but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do all of them and if I do I probably won't be able to do daily videos um, but I am gonna try and do them but I'm obviously gonna put my schoolwork first because I am paying a lot of money more accurately I'm going into a lot of debt in order to do this so I'm really gonna do my best but school does take a priority for me I have about three weeks until I head back to school so until then I'm gonna be trying and making as many videos as I can so that I don't have to worry about that as I'm settling into a new place because I'm actually moving from Michigan to Minnesota for school so I'm not gonna be even close to my home and it's gonna be a whole new area and everything's gonna be different um, so we're gonna have to say goodbye to my bookshelf and I'm gonna be very busy packing everything and sorting everything and just getting prepared for that um, I'm gonna miss my bookshelves a lot but I have to pack up all these books but I do hope to do a video of books that I plan on bringing to college with me and how I'm gonna store them in my dorm room um, but yeah that should be it for now and without further ado I'm gonna get in today's video of reviewing the books that I read during the 2019 reading rush okay so the first book I read I actually did talk a lot about in the vlog because that was the day where I had just a ton of time on my hands and so I read the entire book and that was the once upon a dream a twisted tale by Liz Braswell it's a retelling of the story Sleeping Beauty but it's told through Sleeping Beauty as she is asleep and so what all happens in her dream um, like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I liked the twists in it. I liked that there were multiple twists so that when one came earlier on in the book, that wasn't going to be like the major thing for the entire book. Um, I would have to say that some of the character ideas I wasn't super thrilled with. I feel like Maleficent could have been flushed out a little bit more. The prince was interesting. I go back and forth on the prince um, because he is very much like the original story, which I appreciate, but I just don't know how well that really meshed with this newfound Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, Briar Rose, whoever she is. There's that fight going on of Rose, Briar Rose versus Aurora kind of thing, and I'm left slightly confused still. Um, but other than that, I thought the characters were great. I appreciated the changes with Sleeping Beauty with the girl. I just don't know how well that meshed with the prince, and I just wish there had been more for Maleficent. Although I did also appreciate the backstory, I guess what I'm trying to say is that at the end we did get a lot of her backstory, but I don't think there was enough of her in the present in the beginning to give her that now personality. There was her backstory near the end and her presence, but there wasn't much of a person there in the moment for the first like half of the book. Um, but other than that, so because of that, I would probably give this like a 4 out of 5 stars because I liked the writing style. I related to the character a lot just by fact of she wasn't afraid to ask the questions that I had in my head. And so then I was like, yeah, no, see, I get it. Like, what's going on? What? Why? Who? How? Huh? Shmur? Etc. Um, so that was really nice. It kind of made like a fantasy story slightly more like realistic or relatable, even though... To me, stories like this don't need to be relatable. It was just like, hey, that's a nice surprise edition thing. But yeah, so like I said, like four out of five stars. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're looking for a new read, but an old story especially. Just kind of something that's familiar, but can still add those twists and turns. I see why they're called a twisted tale. 
So there we go. The next one that I read that I started and finished, so the next one that I finished was Psych's Guide to Crime Fighting for the Totally Unqualified, and I loved this book. There wasn't much of a plot line, but that's because that's not the purpose of the book. It's a guide, so there's a whole bunch of tips and tricks and a lot of explanations about Sean. If you haven't seen the TV show, I would definitely recommend watching the TV show because then you'll understand this book so much better. You Because, like, different characters from the TV show kind of add their own opinions and their own expertise in different parts of the book, and not a lot of it will make sense to you if you haven't. There's also a movie that came out just like a year ago maybe? Something like that? And that was an amazing movie. So if you have seen the show and you haven't read the book or seen the movie, I would also recommend the movie. Which like movies off of TV shows really aren't my favorite thing. But my brother who gave me this book was so excited for it and we watched it and I ended up really really liking it. And so he actually got me this guide, and it was a hilarious read, absolutely funny, and it was very quick too, just because there are lots of pictures and diagrams and big words, and it's, it's just absolutely hilarious, and I know I keep saying that over and over again, but that's because it's true. So I don't really want to give this much of a rating, because for as it is, I say it's perfect. <laughs> Um, so, like, as the book is an individual, it's a 5 out of 5, but if you were to relate this book to other books that I've read that I would give a 5 out of 5, I mean, it's just really different. So I don't want to group it with anything, so I'm just gonna have it be its own independent, really well-written book. I honestly think it was, like, written by Sean Spencer. I don't know if the actor wrote it, or if the writers of the show wrote it, or some collaboration, because it actually says... Sean Spencer with Burton Guster, the character names, and I couldn't find any other, like, author credit, but it's amazing, and that just makes it all the more real. And the next book that I read and finished, again, and finished, was The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adayemi. This one I don't have the physical book for because it was actually an audiobook, which I had on my phone. And I already returned it to the library, and I'm using my phone to film, so can't really get a picture of it. Um, but I also really enjoyed that book. It's definitely something new for me to read, um, but I really love the author's ties to the story. And I, so I thought the story was fine. I thought it was great. You know, I'd recommend reading it. It was a lot of fun, very interesting, very entertaining. But then reading the author's note at the end of the book changed the whole thing for me. So for those of you who don't know, this book is about, uh, this book takes place in, in and around Lagos in Nigeria, um, but they call, they refer to it more as Orisha, which is more of a concept of like a people or a land um, by the gods rather than like a set country that you can see on the map. But the city names are all from Nigeria. So I, I say it takes place in Nigeria, even though they will only refer to it as Orisha. Um, but this is about a group of people who don't have magic, and then a group of people who are born with white in their hair, meaning that they can do magic, they are diviners. But those who actually have their magic are magi. So it's kind of like three separate things but the thing is is like all diviners would eventually become magi except the gods are gone and so there's no one to give ma and magic is gone so it's like all the diviners can no longer become magi and magic is gone from the land um so it follows a girl who is a diviner and how she tries to restore magic back while at the same time being hunted by the prince whose father has has been the one who's gotten rid of magic, he hates it, he's all against it, and so is the prince. Um, so it's that story of them being hunted and different challenges that present themselves on this journey. But reading the author's note about she wrote this because her people are, in real life, being mistreated and killed for no good reason, for being who they are, which is not right, it is an injustice in our world. 
and it has gotten some attention recently recently but attention is not going to change it it is a way to make move forward to change but you actually have to do something you can know about it and then you can do something about it and she wants people to be able to know about it so that they actually do something about it because this does really need to change um, everyone needs to be treated with equality and just our world is a mess and we need to be trying to fix it rather than ignoring it or just making it worse anyway so it's a light political rant in there but that's it's one of those books where it's really entertaining to read but then when you stop and think about it there's actually like a huge modern day moral behind it and it, you just really rethink about how you live about how others live and what you can do about it um so i would recommend reading it whether you're reading it for fun or if you need to rethink about life i guess and how you treat and see other people um but i'm gonna leave that up to you because <laughs> But I would definitely recommend this book. It was very well written. It was a lot of fun. And she has her next one, um, Children of Vice and Virtue, coming out this December. And I am excited to read it. As long as I... As long as it becomes available somewhere near me, and I'm sure it would. Um, because I'm sure there has to be, like, a Barnes & Noble in Minnesota. Like, that story is everywhere. Um, so I'm going to be really excited to read that one as well. I'm very interested to see how she continues on and what else she brings to the table both literally in the story and figuratively about the story so yeah again definite recommend please read it no matter who you are what background you come from point of view whatever it's a good book i like the characters uh i like although the ending did frustrate me a little bit but that's kind of how I know it's a good book. Like, if an ending of a book can frustrate me or make me feel emotional, whether it's positively or negatively, if there is some strong feeling that I have at the end of the book, it generally means that I liked it or I was invested enough in it to rate it well. Even if, like, the book ended and I was so mad, that just means that I was invested in the story and... Therefore, it was written well and should be rated well, even if the ending just... Alright, now I'm going to move on to the last book that I read for the readathon, and the one I read and finished in the nick of time. I literally started it the first day of the challenge, and I finished it in that literal last hour of the challenge what was wrong with me i don't know i i was really busy but you know what let's just not dwell on it i got it done that book is i am number four by pittacus lore so i know that there are at least two more books after this it's like the power of six and then something of nine this book i think was all right um i don't honestly know if i'm gonna pick up the next one just because i don't think either there was enough of a cliffhanger or there's just enough invest I didn't have enough investment in this book to want to continue I might start six and see what it's about and then decide because if it's a continuation of this maybe not but if it like starts from the beginning of number six maybe I don't know but this book came out years ago, so I know a lot of you are just like, Oh, I know, and why don't you do this, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. I, I just didn't read it when it came out. And then I bought it. And now I'm finally re I read it. But yeah, we'll see. Like, it was a good book. Um, I mean, the characters were alright. The, the story, the, the idea of the book was really cool. I enjoyed... The whole idea of aliens coming to Earth to reserve their race, running from another alien race, and then being hunted on Earth, like, that was just fine. And I loved Henry. Henry was my favorite character other than the dog, but I, my favorite um, humanoid, so not human, humanoid, character was Henry. I mean, 
Number four was fine. Sarah was fine. They were fine together. That's really all I have to say. Just because, like, it was a fine book. You know? Like, I enjoyed reading it. I finished it. But I wasn't super emotionally invested into it. Like, for example, with the romance. It was fine. I keep using that word over and over again, but I don't really know what else to say. It was alright. Like, I support them as a couple. And I feel bad about all the challenges they went through. I almost spoiled the book, but no spoilers in this video. Um... But, I mean, that was really just kind of it. Like, it happened. Okay. They got together. Okay. Things happened. Okay. But, as the couple got closer together, I didn't... I didn't really feel... I Like, it felt like a very young high school relationship. Like, they're 15 years old, and it felt like a very 15-year-old relationship, which normally I should be happy about because, like, they're 15 and they have a 15-year-old relationship. Like, that's how life should go. That's how things should go. But I just don't think it was done that well or... Yeah. Normally I should be saying this is good. But no. So that's kind of how I'm going to end it. I'm just going to end it off there like that. Sorry, I have to move my phone a bit. It's overheating. Um, but yeah, so I'm honestly going to end this book review right there just because there's a lot I don't want to spoil. But there's also not a lot that I want to talk about just because it was okay. So okay. Okay, so that is the end of this video. I just reviewed all the books that I read and I was able to complete all seven challenges that they posted about through these four books um so if you like this video feel free to like it give it a thumbs up um even subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you know the next time i upload i hope to upload every other thursday friday ish um so hopefully i'll start getting that regular schedule going soon and yeah Feel free to comment down below what you liked about the video, what you didn't like about the video so that I can improve, or if you have videos ideas of what you want me to do, if you want me to read a book so I can share my thoughts about it and then we can have a discussion or relate. Um, yeah, just feel free to comment below, click the subscribe button, like it, you know, do whatever you want. Just let me know if you actually like it and you want me to continue doing these kinds of things or would you rather me do other things if you have any ideas. Yeah, let me know. So, happy reading!